dotted line. Plants for the doubt for your freedom ring and patriotic voices sing. Red, white, and blue, never give up. You represent America! Kids. Our fleet has finally arrived nearby at Chesapeake Bay. It will carry our troops to a position from which we will crush the rebels once and for all. Cornwallis will move to near Yorktown, where he'll wait for the British fleet to arrive in Chesapeake Bay. When his ships arrive, he will attack us. Admiral de Grasse will have 29 warships and 3,000 troops. Our army and Rochambeau could march south and join Lafayette on the other side of Yorktown. We would then be surrounding the British by land and by sea. So the army marches south, it could be the huge victory we've been hoping for. Dear Moses, I write from the Marquis de Lafayette's camp in Virginia a place filled with anticipation. Attention! Lord Cornwallis and his British troops are nearby at Yorktown. On one side of him is Chesapeake Bay, which we hope will soon be filled with French warships. On the other side, walled trenches encircle the city. I wait far away from those walls, with Henri and the Marquis, for the armies of Generals Washington and Rochambeau to march here from New York. C'est tout. Thanks to a Negro spy whose name I dare not write down, Cornwallis suspects nothing of General Washington's trap and plans to remain in Yorktown. Your brother Cato is here. Our spy saw him. <gasps> he is a soldier fighting with the British to earn his freedom. Moses, I fear a terrible battle. But I also dare hope that, if the French fleet arrives here in time, it will be the final victorious battle of this, our long war for freedom. Speak. The hurricane is still heading due north and gaining speed. Take in the sails, Capitaine, and batten down the hatches. Yes, sir. The Americans are lucky that this storm is forcing us toward Virginia. They best hope it doesn't change its course and force us to change ours. We must hurry to join Washington in New York. Engineer Rochambeau, do you truly think it's possible for our army and Washington's and the Grass's fleet to reach Virginia before Cornwallis leaves or is joined by the British fleet? I do not know, Duke. Oui, allez, oui, allez. Oui, so many things must go right. And so many things can go wrong. James, with this heat and all these supplies, it's a good thing we're only marching to New York City. You've got it all wrong. We're not attacking in New York. We're attacking in Virginia. That's ridiculous, James. If it's so hot here, can you imagine what it's like down south? No, thanks. To march an army 500 miles in the height of summer? <laughs> no, my friend. We're going to retake New York City and win this war. <laughs> Sir, some of the men are betting each other on whether we're marching to New York or Virginia. Excellent. And our spies are spreading the word that we'll attack New York. 
Our only hope is to be well on our way to Virginia before the British realize that's where we plan to attack them. I will not have any more British soldiers die of heat stroke digging our trenches and building our fortifications. You will immediately replace them with Negro soldiers. Present arms, right, face, forward, march. Halt! Too many British soldiers are dying out there, so they're sending us in their place. That is not right. You look pleased, Joseph Plum Martin. And why should I not be? We're headed to Virginia with General Washington to pay our old friends the British a visit. They might see us and say there's too many of us for a party, but I'll say to them, the more the merrier. Moses! Hello, James. You know my old friend Joseph Plum Martin? Of course. What's the satchel for? I assume you're with the Mining Corps, Joseph? I certainly am. We'll be digging many a trench in your town before we're through. Can you use another man who understands engineering? I must get to the front lines. Welcome to the Mining Corps of General George Washington. My dear Lafayette, we have reached Philadelphia and are continuing our march south. General Rochambeau will sail south down the Delaware River. Then his army and mine will reunite and, and march, march for Yorktown to cut off any escape by land by the British troops. You have done wonderfully keeping Cornwallis at Yorktown these past weeks. But Marquis, what of the French fleet? Our plan now relies on their arriving to cut off a British escape through Chesapeake Bay. If the fleet reaches the bay, victory may finally be ours. If they do not, the British could escape and our great opportunity would be lost. If you get any news about the ship's arrival near Yorktown, send it, I pray you, on the spur of speed. Yours, George Washington. Well, General Rochambeau, our army is moving nicely down the river. Bon, let us hope the French fleet of warships is moving just as nicely into Chesapeake Bay. General! Qu'est-ce que c'est? General Rochambeau, the ships are here. They've arrived. General! General! I received a message. The French fleet has arrived in Chesapeake Bay. 32 warships with 3,000 troops. Now, when we reach Yorktown, we can surround the British. General Cornwallis, sir, we must abandon our position before Washington and Rochambeau arrive, while we still can. No! When our own ships arrive, we will engage the rebels in the single battle that will give us America. But what if our ships don't arrive? I mean, yes, sir. Those ships are not ours. They are British. We are not ready to do battle. Admiral de Graffs, if the British attack before we get into formation, they'll tear us to pieces. Prepare to meet them. All hands on deck. Signal the fleet. Run the cannons out. Weigh anchor and press the sails. Full speed, west, southwest. Battle line formation. Fire when in range. <laughs> the fool! He is not attacking. He is 
stopping to form a battle line. Half their fleet is becalmed, sir. The wind favors us. This just might give us the time we need. to get more British ships to protect them. I wonder whether Rochambeau and Washington will arrive here before they return. Washington! Welcome to Virginia! They'll never beat us now! Freedom! Dear Marquis. Hello, James. Hi. Mon ami! Okay, okay, Henri. I'm glad to see you too. Can we just shake hands? We must take Cornwallis or be all dishonored. Your Excellency, take him we shall. should not be singled out from any other soldiers for this duty. You'll be all right. Just rest. Since I came to these shores, I've been mistreated by white people. First as a slave, now as a soldier. There must be good white people. Show them to me. Please, show them to me! Fine work, James Armistead. The Marquis has told me how greatly your spying has aided our cause. Thank you. Now we can lay siege to Lord Cornwallis's position. Nothing and no one will go in or out of Yorktown. General Rochambeau. We will begin digging our trenches here. Beyond the range of British artillery, we shall better the fortifications of Yorktown and every day, move closer and tighter around them. Soon, we will be close enough to fire into the town itself. It might take days, it might take weeks, but sooner or later, the British will run out of ammunition, out of food, and out of shelter. And when that day arrives, my friends, they will be ours. boys. Let's dig these trenches for all we're worth. James, my coat. Come. Excuse me, sir, but we are surrounded. Escape from this place. They have only light artillery that cannot damage our fortifications. We are not in danger. Brothers, eat while there is still food. I think we'll be safe here. I pray that Cornwallis surrenders quickly once the siege begins. Whatever happens, I'll make sure that people everywhere get to read about it. And I'll make sure that what they read makes sense.
push him closer. Dig more trenches. Here. French friends are only 200 yards from the walls of Yorktown. We are now close enough to fire over the walls and into the British position. General, what will be your first target? We shall pay a visit to General Cornwallis himself. They can't last much longer in there. General Clinton, because of this siege, we no longer have enough food or water to sustain all our men. I'm afraid our Negro soldiers will have to fend for themselves. Stop! Where are you sending those men? No! They are soldiers! It's too dangerous! And they are unarmed! Do not send them out of the fortifications! Promised us our freedom. Even if we survive that, they'll capture us. They'll make us slaves again. Get down! What's that? Fire! Could I use your spyglass? Cato! It's my brother! Fire! Cease fire! Stop firing! Fire! I think they're surrendering. Cease fire! Cease fire! General Cornwallis surrendered and the British had to lay down their arms. Since the British did not give our army the honors of war when they defeated us at Charleston, we will not give them the honor of flying their flag now, but we'll give them their Tories and our deserters. We do not want them among us. Excuse me, Your Excellency. May I ask you something, please? Of course, Sarah. What will happen to the Negroes who have fought with the British? They will be returned to their owners. Sir, that is outrageous! Sarah, you don't talk to His Excellency like that. Joseph, you don't know Sarah. It may be outrageous, young lady, but it is also the law. Sir, it is a terrible law that must be changed. One victory at a time, my dear. Where's Moses? Cornwallis has surrendered. The British have lost. You must go. Now! I have to know, why are you helping us? We're just a bunch of slaves to you. You men are not slaves, you are soldiers. You deserve far more aid than I'm able to give. Sir, what is your name? I am Captain Gottfried Hiltz. Thank you, Captain Hiltz. Hurry!
take your hands off me! I am a free man! Kato! <laughs> we won! Kato! Kato! I will help you, James Armistead. You have my word. You will be free. When I am, I will call myself James Lafayette. You? You are with the Americans? Yes, sir. I am an American. I despise the colonies. General Washington, now that you've won the war, what's next? We haven't won yet, James. The British still occupy a great deal of our country. You write your story, lad. I must prepare my tired men for our next battle. Yeah!